In today's video, I'm going to share with you the story of the other prodigal. This story could be the thing that makes it finally click for you in your relationship with God. We all know the story of the prodigal son, but today I'm going to share with you something a little bit different. So I want you to stay to the very end because I'm going to connect it with my story and my relationship with God. So stay tuned. This video is brought to you by my patrons on Patreon. This ministry can only keep going and growing by the wonderful people over on Patreon supporting me on a monthly basis. If you want to get behind what I'm doing in the mission of Daily Disciple and equipping people to follow Jesus daily, I'd encourage you to support because, hey, like, this is what I do for my full-time job. Um, this is the way that I can support my family, so it'd be a huge blessing. Now, on to the video. So we're going to look at the story of the other prodigal in a second, but first I want to tell you two stories. These are two real stories. The first story is of Chris. Chris is your average, nice Christian guy. He grew up in a Christian family with two sisters, and growing up, he went to a Christian private school. He did what he was supposed to do. He was captain of the football team. He really tried to live an upright and moral life. His dad would always tell him is that character was most important. Character was what mattered. He was class president. He excelled at his studies and he was going to get a scholarship to play football in a college in the South. If you were to ask Chris what matters in life, he would say it's about being a good person. It's about sticking to your convictions, sticking to your morals, um, you know, raising a good family, being a good husband being a good son. That's what it was all about. And then there's Claire's story. Claire knew Chris actually in high school and yet they didn't really connect. Um, she got caught up with a different crowd. This crowd was generally not super popular. They like smoking weed. They like smoking. <laughs> they like drinking on the weekends. They like partying. For her, it was just a place to connect. She grew up in church. Her family for the most part were Christians and yet she hid this from him. Why? because she wanted to have a place to belong, because she didn't like all the kind of rules and things that were associated with Christianity. It felt so, it, it boxed her in. She wanted to express herself. She wanted to find a place where she could belong and be herself. One Sunday, Claire wakes up after being hung over for another Saturday night and looks at herself in the mirror and realizes this isn't who she wants to be. How far has she fallen from that girl that went to Sunday school in the morning her parents don't know who she is anymore. She doesn't know who she is anymore. But just then she gets an Instagram DM from somebody she knew from high school, not Chris, a quieter girl who invites her to hang out with her at church. Just a simple invitation. Hey, would you want to come to church? Uh, I know I, I know, we haven't really connected, but it, it might be fun. It might be interesting. You might learn about God. I, I don't know if you're going to a church right now. And she says, actually, yeah, I haven't gone to my parents' church in a long time. And I've been really wanting to connect. Now, it just so happened that that was the church that Chris was attending. And as he looks over at Claire, he, he remembers Claire. He, he didn't really know her that well, but he knew the crowd that she was a part of. And he thinks to himself, man, people just coming to God now. I've done it the right way. I've done, I've lived my life in an upstanding way. And they're just trying to scrape their way to God. What an embarrassment. Okay, remember the story. I'm going to come back to it in a second, but let's dive into Luke 15. Now, this is the story of the prodigal son. Most of us are familiar with this story. At least we've read it or we've heard it before, but I want you to see it with new eyes with me now as we learn about the other prodigal. This is Jesus talking. And he said, there was a man who had two sons and the younger of them said to his father, father, give me the share of the property that's coming to me. And he had divided his property between them. Not many days later, the younger son gathered all that he had and took a journey into a far country. There he squandered his property in reckless living. And when he had spent everything, a severe famine arose in that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him into the fields to feed the pigs. And when he was longing to be fed with the pods that the pigs ate, and no one gave him anything, but... When he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread? But I perish here with hunger, and I will rise and go to my father, and I will say, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. So he goes from living the high life to rock bottom to believing that he can offer himself as a slave to his father in order to have a decent meal. 
And he arose and came to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring quickly the best robe and put it on him and put on the ring on his hand and the shoes on his feet and bring the fattened calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate for this my son was dead and now is alive again. He was lost and is found. This truly is one of the most beautiful stories in all of scripture. A story of forgiveness, of redemption, that even when we've squandered all the blessings that God has provided for us in our life, even when we've sinned against him, even when we've chosen to take the temporal things of this world and squander what we have, God receives us back, not in judgment, not in anger, not in shaming us, but in joy, because my son has returned. The son comes back in repentance, and the father receives that. But he doesn't turn and say, well, I told you so. Well, you know, look at what you've done. You're, you're so evil. You're so disgusting. You're so dirty. No, the father says, you know, kill the, the fattened calf. Get, get the celebration going. Get this party started, because my son has returned. This is awesome. So what's the story of the other prodigal? Well, we need to keep reading the story. Often the story ends right here but it doesn't. Now his older son was in the field, and as he came and drew near to the house, he heard the music and dancing. You can just imagine the scene. He's been working lo a long day in the field for his father. Sweat is pouring down his shirt. He's exhausted, and he hears this dancing and this music, and he's wondering, what's going on here? And he called one of the servants and asked, what are these things meant? And he said to him, your brother has come and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has received him home back safe and sound. What's going through this, the mind of this other brother at this point? Just put yourself in his position. Your brother has taken all the property that he was, you know, a part of his inheritance. He's gone. He squandered everything. You know, you've been staying home. You've been working. You've been trying to please your father. And now he's returned. And you're, what you're hoping in your core is that the father is going to scold him to say, oh, look at your, your brother has stayed. Your brother has worked hard. Your brother has done all this, these things for me. And what have you provided me? You've given me nothing. And, and you want your father to do that because that's going to make you feel good. That's going to make you feel like, yeah, yeah, I have been working hard. I have been doing this for my father and you've done nothing. But he was angry and refused to go in. His father came out and entreated him. But he answered his father, look. These many years I have served you. I never disobeyed your command, and yet you never gave me the young goat that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came, who devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fattened calf for him? And he said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. It was fitting to celebrate and be glad, for this your brother was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found. I think we can all understand, at least a little bit, the anger of that other son. He said, I've been working for you for years, literally years, father, and and I didn't get a party. I didn't get the big celebration. It feels like I, I'm exhausted. I'm burnt out. And now you're providing this, this party and the celebration for somebody that that has despised you and spat in your face and taken all that you, you know, a whole bunch of what you had and were given to him and just wasted it, right? How is that fair? How is that fair? So what's going on here? What we need to understand here is that there was a core lie that the son, the other prodigal, had. He, his, the lie that he was believing was that he was deserving, he was deserving of his father's love. He was deserving of his father's love. So here's the deal, is that when the, the prodigal son, right, the other son, took all, all the inheritance and he wasted it and da-da-da-da-da, when he was received back with rejoicing, the other son was incensed. How could you do this? How could you do this? I've been working so hard, and yet uh, it doesn't feel like you have given me the same love that you've given him, and he's done nothing for it. Here's the deal. Neither of these sons deserve their father's love. Their father's love to them was a gift, was a mere reflection of their identity of being his child, right? That, that was why he loved them, because they, they, he was, they were his child. And so this son that has been working, he's been working under the false pretense that it was on him to earn his sonhood. It was on him to earn his place. Look, Father, I've earned it. I've done the work. I've never disobeyed you. Will you love me? Will you throw me a party? 
Why would you throw him apart? He's done nothing. Here's the deal. What the father says is, all that I have is yours, son. You, you didn't earn it either. You were working in the field. Thank you for that. But you've been doing a lot of that for your own self-gratification, for your, to bolster your own ego, to bolster your own pride, to say, I'm the best son. I never do anything wrong. I'm doing amazing. And meanwhile, you could have asked me for the fattened calf. You could have asked me to throw you a party because I would have. I would have because I love you. But it's not because you deserve it. It's not because you've been working hard. It's because you're my son. Both sons, in a sense, rejected their father's love, rejected their father's gifts. Um, the first son, he receives the gifts, right? But but he goes to to indulge, right? He's like, the father's not good enough. I'm not gonna stick. I'm not gonna stay with what he has for me and be in his house. I'm gonna go to a far off land and indulge and be pleasured, right? The other son, he sticks in the father's house. But instead of resting in the father's love, instead of seeing all his working as an overflow of his connection to the father, of I'm, I'm your son, of course I want to do this, of course I want to work, he sees it as, okay, if I do this, if I hunker down, if I never disobey, if I, if I never you know, question it, if I'm always just working hard, then I will receive God's love. I will receive my father's love, really is what's going on. And he's working, he's a worker. It's interesting, the contrast here, the, the, the prodigal comes back and he says, you know, father, I'm going to be a slave now because I've wasted everything that you've given me. I'm just going to be a slave, right? And the father receives him back. So no, no, you're my son, right? The, the older son, he's already acting like a slave. He's already acting like a worker. He's saying, oh, you know, I've been working in the field. I've never disobeyed. I've, it's like he's already a slave. Meanwhile, the father is like, all I have is yours. Start acting like a son and not like a slave. Because all that I have is yours already. You are my son. And I would have thrown you a party. But you've been so caught up in trying to patch your own ego and trying to earn what is already given to you. Because your pride is so huge. Now let's go back to our story for a second. If you were to look at Chris's heart, you would have seen somebody that had a hard heart. A heart that really believed that they were awesome. That they were great. That they deserved a lot. What happens when Chris's scholarship falls through and he gets in a car accident on the same day? He wrecks his car. His scholarship is done. He's absolutely so angry at God. God, why are you doing this to me? God, I thought I was doing the right thing. I thought I was being that person that you wanted me to be. And yet it feels like you've abandoned me. Claire goes to church that day and she comes back to Jesus for the first time, honestly. She knew about him, but she never knew him. Chris sees Claire walk out of the church. She's got a smile on her face and he thinks, oh, why should she have a smile on her face? She, she's done everything wrong. She's made every mistake you could make. And I've done everything right. And yet I'm not getting what I want. And she's getting what she wants. Here's the deal, guys. God wants a soft heart. And only he can do that within you. God wants a soft heart. And only he can do that within you. Think of a young man who goes door to door and he, he knocks on the door and he says, excuse me, sir, I have a lawn business. I can mow your lawn and in, in exchange, I will become your son. And the, the older fellow looks at him with kind of a confused look and says, you know, what do you mean? You're not going to become my son just because you mow my lawn. That's not how this thing works. Okay. On the contrast. Uh, father wakes up his son on a Saturday morning. The son is all groggy and he, he wakes up. He's like, what's going on, dad? And the father's like, okay, hey, son, I need you to mow the lawn today for me. Uh, that would be awesome. That would be a huge help to, you know, me. And you say, oh, okay, dad, you know what? I'll, I'll, uh, I'll get to it in just a, a few minutes. I'm just going to wake up a little bit, um, but I'll, I'll do that. No problem. Why? Because you're his son. You're his son. You already have the identity, and now you enact the works that are consistent with that ident identity. If you go around, right, so many people go around <laughs> to God saying, God, I'll mow your lawn as long as I can be called your son. And God looks at them and says, <laughs> that's not going to make you a son. You know, you, you, you need to get that identity first. And that identity, especially when it, well, when it comes to God, is a gift. He says, oh, you know what? I will adopt you as my son because I love you, because I've forgiven you, because of my work on the cross on your behalf, that you can be forgiven and you can be restored and you can be made new. That is the best thing ever. It is a gift, but he wants us to humble ourselves. We need to ask him, God, humble me 
and make my heart soft that I could receive this gift. I hope you guys were blessed by today's video, whether you're, you feel more connected with the prodigal son or the other prodigal. Uh, I, I hope that this benefited you and you were encouraged by it. Um, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, subscribe because I'm putting out new videos all the time. And until next time, God bless. I'm just recording. I like your hair. It's very cute. You're sewing? Yes. That is fun. Hey, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. I love you. Okay, bye.